Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and a welcome to my fourth and final video for my Easter weekend. Uh, so, so far we have covered seabirds and birds in flight, coastal photography, small birds, and now we're here to do some macro woodland photography. So I've kind of covered all the bases that uh, I kind of cover on this channel. Um, obviously I haven't been able to get out and do any sort of epic landscapes or uh, vistas and all that sort of stuff, but I've managed to actually get a good variety from the four videos that we've put out this weekend. If you've not watched the previous ones, head back, check them out. So first shot of the day already and it kind of ties in with exactly what I want to discuss today and that is how to make sure you are getting the sharpest possible image when taking something like macro photography now we'll come back and talk about that in a minute at present it is really windy and I've come into the trees and I've managed to find this old, really old, gnarly tree stump that's covered in moss. Now, I don't know if you'll be able to see in the video, but we've got these jagged bits of wood sticking up to make these lovely points and poke through that moss. Now, what I've done is I've focused on one of them and I've managed to create a focus stack to ensure that I am getting a sharp image from the very front of the little knobbly bit right the way to the back of it whilst also throwing out the uh, the background as well and making sure that that is absolutely blurred out so the focus really is on this little knobbly bit so i say we'll come back and talk about focus in a moment um i'll pop this image up in a second and we'll go see if we can find any more decent macro photography in the woods It is so windy today. A um, little bit disappointing really. So I had this plan to come out into the woods and it's really windy, which is gonna make the macro photography a little bit more difficult if I'm focusing on leaves or anything like that. Gonna to have to try and find some more static subjects. So, yeah. So the Easter weekend then. It's been some good graft. It's been totally not what I, uh, planned i planned on going to uh obviously the uh east yorkshire coast getting the four videos done from there turns out i only got two videos from there and then obviously one from home fen focusing on small birds which was a bit of a failure and now some more macro photography which you know i love coming out and doing but another downside about the macro photography is that I thought we'd be a little bit more into spring when I decided this is what I was going to do and I've left it as late as possible before Easter. So this is literally filmed the weekend before Easter and yeah, I'm not seeing much new generation of uh, plants or any buds or anything like that. A little bit disappointing, but never mind, never mind. So. Just want to say a thank you, obviously, for anyone who has actually tuned in and watched my Easter weekend. Uh, any new subscribers, if you've come and joined the channel because of the videos from this weekend, it is really appreciated. Um, so yeah, I just want to say I absolutely love what I do. I love being out with the camera. I love doing my landscape photography, my woodland photography, my coastal photography, and also as well, my new, not love in the respect of that it's dominating my life, but 
I'm really loving being out doing wildlife photography as well. And there's going to be a lot more of that dropping onto the channel as well. I do try and alternate between wildlife and landscape to uh, satisfy everyone that has subscribed to the channel. Obviously my original followers who uh, joined when I was mainly, or not mainly, always focused on landscape photography. And obviously to the people who have joined to follow my wildlife photography. So yeah, I try and do what I can, but uh, yeah, I think the ease of getting out and doing wildlife photography is, is absolutely fantastic. And I did a video and saying about it's probably the most awesome thing about the wildlife photography. Gives some really good variation because it doesn't matter on what your location is. It's just the ability to get out, even if you're photographing the same sort of birds and you know, if you're photographing blue tits and great tits and, and um, long-tailed tits, I will find a decent picture of a long-tailed tit. Um, but yeah, obviously a massive, massive thank you though to everyone who supports this channel, whether you're one of my original subscribers, whether you're one of my new subscribers or wh whatever reason you're here for. So yeah, massive thank you. I'm gonna carry on wandering around see if we can find some decent macro woodland photography today. So you know when things just aren't going to plan. Today is one of those days again, um, but it's fine. I can work with it now. The problem I've got is this breeze. Um, you can probably see from the bits of leaves and stuff that are around me that even in the slightest of breezes, it's blowing those leaves around. So trying to do any focus stacking work is really not working because it's gonna mess up the alignment when I get it back onto the computer. So I've tried to go for static subjects, which is why I've picked on this tree stump with a little bit of moss on the top. Now I've actually just narrowed it down to a very, very small portion of that, just purely because I want that intricate detail. So I've got a little bit of this here, of the wood that's rotten and worn away. And then I've got a little bit of the moss on the top. And what I've done is I'm kind of shooting just slightly over the top of it. So there's a little bit more moss at the background, but that's still gonna remain out of focus. I've gone for a 10 image focus stack. Now, focusing. So, when you're doing a focus stack, it's really, really key to make sure that you've got the right focus. And the way to do this is using your magnifier on your camera, which is a really, really handy feature. Now, I know that cameras have had this in for a while. My 5DS had it and the A7R4 has got it as well. Um, so my old 5DS, I didn't realize for a number of years that it had it. I did make a video about it, um, which completely changed how I actually did photography. As I say, the A7R4 does have it as well. And what you do is, I've got it set on one of the custom function buttons. Um, purely because it means that I can access it quickly. Now, I don't just use it for macro photography. I also use it when I'm focusing for even large vistas, things like that. I do it to make sure that my focus is pinpoint to exactly where I want it. It's so easy to miss focus because it's maybe gone a little bit behind when the lights changed. It hasn't picked up the contrast and stuff. So it doesn't grab that focus as easy. Now, when you use the magnifier, you can actually identify the exact spot that you want to focus on and either manual focus or autofocus, dependent on your conditions, things like that. Um, with my macro photography, I tend to use manual focus just to make sure that I'm getting the right one, uh, the right bit, sorry, um, because the depth of field is so thin. Landscape ones, I tend to use autofocus when I've got the magnifier on. You know when I said things don't go to plan, it has literally just started slinging it down. I've got a waterproof on, so we're all good, but I'm gonna have to get the camera back in, the, in my bag. So, 
hunt it down if you don't know where it is in your camera and work out how to correctly use that magnifier to assist with your focus. Bloody rain. Oh my God, that's really bad, really bad. That's hail. Get the bug shot, get the bug shot. Hood up. I'm not sure how much you're seeing of this and how loud the mic is because I've just whipped the uh, my hood up. It's not rain, it's hail. My God, where that came from, I don't know. That was not forecast today, but I am soaked already. Um, just trying to get the camera back in the bag. Uh, I knew it was cold today. My hands are actually really chilly. I didn't bother bringing my gloves because I didn't think it was that cold. No one told me there'd be ice falling from the sky. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna kind of tough it out a little bit unless it gets really bad and have a look, see if I can find any more macro photos. Look at these blue skies now. You wouldn't believe I was just getting hailed on like 10 minutes ago. So there is still water falling from the trees, so it's not gonna carry on raining. But I am gonna make this my final shot of the day. Um, purely because I was actually quite surprised at the lack of um, fresh growth. And with this wind as well, it's making it quite difficult to actually photograph any leaves or anything like that. So it kind of sucks because there's some really nice bramble leaves with uh, brown patches and purple patches and things like that on. However, you can't see it, but I've actually got an old dead leaf stuck in this tree stump. Now, the great thing about it is obviously the light is coming from that direction towards me um, and it is actually lighting up the leaf. With the light casting through it, you can actually make out all the veins and everything. It looks gorgeous. So I'm quite lucky that I've managed to find it. Um, but this is the great thing about macro photography. It makes you look at detail like that that you wouldn't usually think that you would see. Now, because I'm so close to it, I mean, front of the lens is obviously here, here even and it is there as well. I've got the circular polarizer on the front as well to cut out any glare because obviously we've just had that rain as well. So I always have it mounted to the front of my macro lens anyway when I'm out doing this sort of stuff, if I remember it. Um, and it's perfect for this situation because it has cut down some of the glare that is on the top of the leaf. Now, as I say, with the light shining through the back of it, you can see all the veins and everything. And this is... <sighs> It's why I love macro photography and coming out into the woodlands and all this sort of stuff, because you can just see stuff. You, you have to look for it, but then you see all this stuff that is really difficult to see with the naked eye from such a distance. It is beautiful. Nature is beautiful. So what I've done anyway, before I keep waxing lyrical about how much I love being out in nature, um, is I focused at the very front of the leaf and as it curves back, I've used the magnifier and I've just tweaked it little steps all the way around with the focus to try and get quite a bit of the leaf in focus, but I don't want all of it in focus. I think I've managed to actually get six shots in just of this leaf and I still can't get all of it in focus, which is brilliant because it just really draws your eye to 
that detail with the veins and stuff that run through it. So as I say, the magnifier has really, really helped me out here because it's allowed me to see the little increments of focus that I need to do whilst also maintaining a very, very, very shallow depth of field. I've got the camera set on F9 and the depth of field is still tiny due to the fact that it's a 105 and the distance is that. It is tiny. So what I'll do anyway is I'm going to sign out now because I've got all my gear to go dry off, me to dry off. And obviously I want to get this edited ready for the Easter weekend. So Last thing I will say then is obviously if you haven't checked out my other videos from the Easter weekend, uh, go check them out. Um, obviously, if you've liked this video, give us the old thumbs up. Drop some subscribes from down the bottom as well. I'd say we've always got content coming from this channel. We've done the Easter weekend and we have plans to actually put up bonus bank holiday stuff for the may bank holidays. We've also looking at releasing more videos than once a week on occasion. Obviously, with everything else that I do, it's not always possible. But we're going to start looking to just release a lot more videos to this channel. So do, obviously, like, subscribe. And this is my account. Take care and be safe, everyone. Peace.